Hey there, Math 2403. Welcome back to Unit 2. This is video number 3. It will be a short one discussing conditional probability. This is an uh, interesting topic. It's very topical. Uh, you have a, a fun lab, I think, <laughs> working with these conditional probabilities. I, I like this topic in that it seems a little more comfortable. Uh, there's a nice formula. Uh, when you see this conditional probability type problem, you will you have a you will know what you are going to do. Whereas some of the previous probability questions we did, they all seem so different. Uh, you know, the dice and the cards and those types of problems often seem to have, uh, they, they seem similar, but they often have uh, unique solutions. So I, I think you'll, you'll really like this conditional probability problem that we're going to tackle today. So let's get to it. So we're talking about conditional probabilities today, and we already did this when we were talking about uh, dependent relationships when we were talking about uh, having repeated trials. So if you have the probability of A and then B, we found that that was the probability of A happening times the probability of B happening given that A already happened. Remember that this line in here is just shorthand for the word given. Now, doing a little bit of algebra here, we can just divide both sides by P of A. And you get the formula below. That allows us to answer questions when we have additional information. Like if, if you know something about the problem, you can use that information to sort of modify the probability of something happening. So we'll say the probability of B happening, given that we know A already happened, is equal to the probability of A and B happening, divided by the probability of A. We'll do a little example here. Uh, we have a chart where we examined titanium rods, and we studied 2,000 of them. And we looked at problems that they could have. They could be too long or too short, have a height flaw. They could have a diameter problem, where the diameter is either too large or too small. Or they could have, say, a crack in them somewhere. If you look at these things, we have totals of our 2,069 had a height problem. So the probability of them being too long or too short, the probability of a height problem is 69 out of 2,000. Or we also have some reasons for these problems. Sometimes the problem is that the material has a flaw in it. Sometimes the temperature was incorrect when the rods were being cast or other times there were grinding issues. So these are reasons for the being, having height problems, diameter problems, or cracks. So say you wanted to know the probability that there was a grinding flaw. M, F, G, just to, you know, for some shorthand here, uh, H, D, and C for height, diameter, and crack. If I want the probability of a grinding flaw, well, there are 95 of them that had grinding flaws out of 2,000. If I wanted to know the probability of there being, uh, say, a height flaw that was caused by faulty material, Height flaw and faulty material. I look to see where those two places intersect. 
I have height problems, and I have faulty materials. And they intersect here in this box. So 12 of the titanium rods had both a height problem and material issues. So that probability is 12 out of 2,000. So I'm just trying to get you a general, you know, feel for how you'd read this information from the table. There's one major problem with this whole example in that height flaw and diameter flaw are independent of one another. Like there's no category where you could have height flaws and diameter flaws at the same time. Uh, our titanium rods would only have it's either too long or too short, or it has a diameter issue, or it has a crack, but it never has multiple issues. So it's not the most realistic example in that sense, but it does give us a, an introduction to this. Let's suppose now that in this bin of 2,000 titanium rods, we reach into it, and we grab one at random. And as we do that, we notice that there's a crack in it. We ask then, what's the probability that the prob that the material was faulty? That's part A here. If one rod, rod is randomly selected, what is the, the likelihood that the flaw was the result of faulty material given that a cracked rod is selected. So what's the probability of it being faulty material given it was cracked? I'll write that as M given C. So we, we didn't just grab a rod at random and ask, what are the chances that it's faulty material? We grabbed one at random, we saw a crack, and now we ask, is this rod going to have faulty material? We can apply our formula up above. It has a format of B given A. So we'll, we'll follow that same order then. We'll say that this is a probability of C and M divided by the probability of C. I'm exactly, I'm just replacing uh, the M is my B and the C is my A in our equation. After you do one of these using the equation, you'll, you'll see that you may not need to use the equation each time. Uh, these are somewhat intuitive after you do a few. What is the probability of being cracked and faulty material? Well, we look to see where cracked intersects with faulty material. That symbol for and means intersection. And it's very, you know, appropriate for these tables because it's where the column and row intersect. So our total here is 727 of them are both cracked and faulty material. So I'll write that as 727 out of the 2000. That is my chance of being cracked and faulty material. Then divide that by the probability of just being cracked in general. And that total is 1426 out of the 2000. And now if you look at that fraction, you can see that the 2000s cancel and you're left with just 727 out of 1426. And that's our answer. 
and I'm just going to leave it as that fraction. Now, does it matter what order these are in? Let's find out by doing another example. Suppose you reach into your bin of 2,000 titanium rods, you pick one at random, and you, want, you can tell that it has faulty material. You know, maybe it's a different color or something. What is the probability that you will find a crack in that rod? So it's the other way around. What is the probability of finding a crack given that you know that it is faulty material? So it's C given M. Now, in the last example, well, let's follow the, let's follow the uh, formula through. It will be M intersected with C divided by the probability of M. I'm going to erase some of our previous scribbles to solve this. On the numerator, it's where M and C intersect. Again, it's the same spot. We have, we're looking at cracked ones, and we're looking at faulty material. So the numerator of this thing is still 727 out of 2,000. But the denominator is different, because it, it's now the probability of being faulty material. And faulty material is the row. So we're looking at this total. Our total is 1118 out of 2000, giving us a final answer of 727 out of 1118. These two do are not the same. So the order of these really matters. So when you're uh, reading these questions, you have to be very careful about, you know, what order you write them. Be very careful about finding what part is given. So a, a key word there is given or it is known. That there will be something that will make it obvious that part of the information was known uh, before you wanted to know the other part. And don't just go by the order of the wording. Uh, don't just, in the first one, I mentioned faulty material first and then cracks, and it was faulty given cracks. But in this one, I mentioned faulty material first, but it was the second part, and crack was the first part. So just watch that. The, the key word is given. And, and hopefully that will help you uh, get these. You have to set them up right in order to get the final answer right, for sure. Uh, for me, I don't run through this formula each time. I basically just look at these things and go, well, let's repeat this question. I want to know the probability of a crack given faulty material. Well, if I am given that I have faulty material, I know that my data is in this row. Like I've been restricted to this row. I know I have one of the faulty material titanium rods. So I know that this is my total. The, the given part tells you the total. So it, it's almost like this is a divide by sign. Your given symbol kind of gives you the total, and then find the number of cracks that are also in that row, which is the 727. And you can just jump to the answer that way. Same with the previous one. In this one, we know that we're in the cracked column, so I know that that's my total. And then what part am I asking for? Material. 
So you don't have to necessarily figure these out each time. I think you can jump right to the answer. Just know that given tells you the total. You're going to do some examples of this in the lab regarding diagnostic testing. You know, like a, a, a test, a pregnancy test or a test for some disease or uh, various other tests for problems. And we'll have discussions about, you know, what does it mean to be false positive? What does it mean to be false negative? Uh, when you hear someone talking about the, a, a new test for a disease and they mention the specificity, what does that mean? That will be discussed in your uh, lab tutorial. So I'm going to call it here for this video, and I hope to see you all next time. Take care.